Okay, everybody, welcome to the latest episode of All Too Real 2. My name is Michael E. Cullen II, and with me, as always, is... Is Matthew Lipschitz Pass. That's a great name. Um, <clears throat> so, uh... Yes, um... Matt, I have some more yep. concerns in the world here. Oh, another one? Yes. What, what's going on? So, um... This one's a serious one. <laughs> okay. I just wanted to let you know that we are podcasters who do not take horse medicine to cure COVID. <sighs> you should go check out the, the discussion on the community fans yeah. um, page. Yeah. Pretty much been like completely infected by right wingers on like every post now. Yeah. There's like 90 comments on a post that someone made where you know the episode like season one where the the accounting teacher is trying to get people to seize the day. Yeah, uh, which is actually really clever if you think about it because he's an accounting professor and he's yeah. trying to get people account for their lives yeah which i think that kind of went over some people's heads but i thought that was brilliant um so like he's always like doing things to like basically like make his day better because he wants every day to be you know like great or whatever so like in the episode um you know jeff is trying to like basically get caught seizing the day so he can get like a good grade in the class and like but he ends yeah. up um he ends up dropping his guard for a moment and just orders like a regular coffee. And it's at that exact moment that the teacher shows up and he sees him like, Oh, uh, an ordinary coffee for an ordinary man or whatever. And then he's like, he gets to the counter and he's like, I shall have, and he just like rips up the menu and he's like a birthday cake. <laughs> yeah. So someone did a, someone did a meme where it says, uh, FDA approved vaccine that shows him going, I shall have a horse dewormer or whatever. And, like, all of these, like, right-wingers are just like, oh, uh, anyone who likes this meme is, is a dumbass. You know, just calling it horse dewormer is just part of the media propaganda. You know, there's there's lots of human use for this drug. It's not just for horses. Which, which, which is it, true, but... Is, yeah. But, <laughs> but the, the fact is, people are literally going to animal places and getting the horse dewormer and using yeah. that as opposed to the human version of it, which is safer. And I'm not saying that that is a way to cure COVID or prevent it or to whatever. Treat it. Yeah. Or to treat it. I don't know. I'm not a doctor, but the well, fact, the, the fact that people are willing to take something that's not even intended for this but not a vaccine that is approved by the FDA. See, that makes no sense, right? That's the whole point. If you're gonna, if you're actually gonna be consistent, then you wouldn't listen to anyone. But my, so the, what's going on in our country now, right now is a thing called the death of expertise. There's actually a book, great book written about this. I forgot the author's name, but it's basically what it is is that like everybody, because of the internet, social media, whatever, all kinds of different reasons for why this is happening. It's not just one thing, but like there's this idea that like anybody can have an opinion on anything, and then that opinion is just as valuable as someone who actually is an expertise in that subject. And then so that person goes through years, sometimes decades, even of studying this whatever it is that they're an expert on. And then there's like a person who like watched a YouTube video or read a few articles, or heck, even even just spends like a couple hours a day studying on that person still doesn't have the level of expertise as someone who does that for a career because even if you let's say spend two hours a day studying something 
that's got nothing on people who study that shit for like 10 hours a day for like decades. Yeah. Like, it's just not. I mean, you have enough knowledge to sound smart and you might have, you know, some interesting ideas about it, sure, but you are not the expert. At the most, you're like an amateur, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with being an amateur, but like, I'll, I'm, if like, if I'm thinking of like medicine or something that's actually gonna be like really important for my life, I'm gonna trust the expert, not the amateur. That's not to insult the amateur, that's just taking a realistic uh, view of the world, personally. Um, but we don't have that anymore in this country. We have people who watch YouTube videos or, or they listen to the one. See, that's the other thing, too. So there's a whole idea of being cont- contrarian for the sake of being contrarian. So it's like your, your argument is not your, but like their argument is. If I have to choose between listening, if like if I'm going to listen to someone no matter what, like if I'm not just going to be completely mm-hmm. like I'm not going to trust anyone. Why did you go the opposite way of trusting the person who knows less than the person who knows more? That well, it's it's no sense whatsoever. It's it's like being a hipster back in the day, where mm-hmm. you were cool because you were listening to this indie band that nobody's ever heard of, as opposed to yeah. listening to Justin Bieber or whatever. You know, I'm I'm just saying that uh, it's it's like. Not saying that Justin Bieber knows everything, but I'm just saying um, <laughs> I get my medical advice from Justin Bieber, actually. Um, there you go. Yeah. But the uh, but, but you know what I'm saying? It's just like y- you think you're cool because you're not listening to the mainstream. And yeah. that doesn't necessarily mean you're cool and it doesn't mean you're right. But I don't know. Anyways. All I'm going to say is just Joe Rogan sucks. So, um, the, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, boy. Last you know good thing he, suck. last good thing he did was news radio. Yeah. And that was like over 25 years ago. Yes. <laughs> but the show still holds up. Watch it, folks. It's oh, great. It does. Yeah. Yeah. Anywho, um, the uh today on the show <laughs> we are covering <clears throat> a unaired pilot um that was produced for NBC in 2006 entitled Lipschitz Saves the World it was created by Dan Fogelman um the creator of This Is Us among other things um <laughs> Star Jack Carpenter, Leslie Nielsen, a a, um, a pre modern family Ty Burrell, and a and Brooklyn Decker. Um, it was a very interesting show. Um, about a you know basically about a normal kid who. Uh, basically has to save the world. <laughs> um, I really enjoyed it. But, uh, I don't know why it didn't continue. I, I yeah, like I said, I really enjoyed it. Um, it was like, basically, it, it's interesting. The show felt a lot like two other shows that came out like a year later. Um, there was the uh, show Reaper that was on the CW. I don't know if you ever watched that. No, I haven't actually seen that show. I never heard of it. Okay, it was on the CW, and the concept of the show was that uh, that this um, average guy that worked at like a Home Depot so- sort of place was um actually the son of satan <laughs> and uh he was um he was basically satan came to him and um and what ended up happening is he had to basically um capture these souls to give to satan so he was kind of a reaper is what he was 
Oh, okay. If if you if you can find it anywhere, I highly recommend the show. It's really good. It lasted like one or two seasons, but it was really really good. Um, the uh, the guy who played uh, what was that? Was it Wild Dog or something on Arrow? The character. Yeah, his name was Wild Dog. Yeah, the guy that played him is one of was one of the regulars on the show too. Um, right, cool. Yeah. Anyways, um, the. Uh, but but anyways, it, it had a very similar feel to this. And oh yeah, and Reaper, by the way, the pilot of Reaper was directed by Kevin Smith, who is known for hmm. um, destroying people's childhood recently. Um, <laughs> just joking. No. <laughs> oh god. Yes. <laughs> so uh, check out our previous episode on Masters of the Universe Revelation and the toxic fandom behind that. Um, but anyways, the. Uh, <laughs> um, the whole uh, that that show was very similar. So was Chuck in a way, where it was just basically about an average guy who is uh, basically becomes something bigger than himself. You know what I mean? Like something is is, is meant for something better than what he thinks he's meant for in life. You know? Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, what um what happens in this episode here, Matt? Um, it's this guy, you know, his name is Adam Lipschitz, obviously. Well, not obviously, his name is Adam. And, uh, he, he's kind of like one of these people who just, like, has daydreams a lot. So, like, starts off with his teachers, like, doing the whole, like, Bueller, Bueller type of thing. And, yeah, it just kind of goes off on the teacher. He's like, you know, you're a dumbass or whatever. So then, you know, teacher, like, sends him to the principal's office and then, Adam, like, goes on to this weird monologue about, like, just whatever. And then, like, he ends up, like, kissing some girl that he likes. And then, turns out the whole thing was just some fantasy in his mind. And then he just ends up, you know, saying here, you know, and the teacher calls his name. And we kind of just, kind of just get a picture, you know, of him being kind of, like, somewhat of, like, an outcast. Like, people kind of pick on him and stuff for being kind of skinny and sort of like, you know, a dork or whatever. Um, and he comes home. <laughs> His mom's, like, obsessed with watching, like, Jerry Springer and, like, trash TV. And she's, like, the the K, one of the KKK guys is going to call someone the N-word, and then they're going to get into a fight. Like, whoa. <laughs> yeah, the, the, um, yeah, the mom's played by Carol Ann uh, Susie, who uh, passed away recently. She was, uh, she was actually the the voice of the mom of Howard on Big Bang Theory. Oh wow! Yeah, I don't know. Just just a little fact, even though I don't really like that show. But she sadly she passed away recently. So, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it, it was interesting there. So so then what happens? Um. Well, then what happens is as he's getting dressed for um, his soccer practice which he doesn't like soccer. He'd rather play football, but his mom wouldn't let him. He sees um, Leslie Nielsen on the other chair watching Jerry Springer with his mom. And yes, le- that, not Leslie Nielsen playing the character, Leslie Nielsen, the person. Yes. Because there's often times where I come into my apartment and Leslie Nielsen is sitting on a chair in my living room. Well, I think that would be really scary since he died a few years ago, I think. Uh, well, that's what people think. He's actually still alive. Uh, he lives in my apartment. Okay. okay. You yeah. sure it's just not a skeleton in your closet? Oh, a literal skeleton? Okay. Yeah. That's creepy. Yes. Uh, and, um, <laughs> yes. You have Leslie Nielsen's skeleton in your closet. Okay. No, no, I I, I had him taxidermied, like, um, like, like... <laughs> Like Mrs. Like Mrs. Oh. Bates and uh, Psycho oh. or something. No. <laughs> oh God! No. Sorry, Leslie. I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh God. Rest in peace. I love that guy though. I remember. I know. It was um, last week before um, freshman year in high school. I ended up seeing a movie of his with my friend Aaron. I forgot which one it was. So whatever movie he was in, like nineteen. 19- 98 in like August. So, yeah. so it was, whatever that movie was, it was that movie. 
and uh, <laughs> I just remember the timeline, you know, because yeah. I started high school in ni- ninety eight. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I just remember seeing that movie and just like you know, just that kind of corny behavior, you know, or corny kind of. I don't know. Just it's just a, it's. it's I mean, its, it's own, interesting because he started out as a serious actor, and then they, yeah, you yeah. know, then he did the airplane movies, and then became like known for that type of humor. Um. Yeah. Uh, what what year was that? You said ninety eight, and I think it was around August um, when um, when we saw it. Um. Wrongfully accused. Yep, that's it. Yep. <laughs> that's one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's that was a that was like a parody of um of the fugitive. Yeah. Okay. That's mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Yeah. I remember that now. Yeah. Uh, it, speaking of airplane, too, he, he like says like, "Don't call me surely," and the kid's like. What, what? Like, he's, yeah. <laughs> he's like, oh, sorry. Pe- people usually say that to me. He's like, uh, okay. <laughs> I've actually, uh, I've played the same role as, uh, as, um, Leslie Nielsen once. Oh, yeah. Yeah, when I was in high school, I played Dr. Chumley in Harvey, and he was in the TV movie as Dr. Chumley. Oh, okay. Yes. So. <laughs> 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 That's cool. Yeah, just just a little known fact. 1996 TV movie starring um, Harry Anderson from uh, Night Court. Yep. Awesome. Yeah. So, um, anyways, um, what else happens here, Matt? <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, Leslie Nielsen, the person... Um, tells Adam that he's supposed to save the world, that he's he's kind of like a <clears throat> basically a prophecy for told him or, or something like that, but he can't tell him you yeah. know, too much about it. So he um, has to commit an act of sexual assault, which this is 2006, yeah. and that was seen as funny back then in a lot of things. He has to somehow Get, well, not necessarily sexual assault. I mean, he get the, the girl's consent, but still, it's yeah. kind of weird to ask a girl, "Can I have your bra and can I touch your right booba?" And he says, "Booby," like which is weird because isn't "booby" kind of like a slang for like someone's grandmother? So yeah, but was, I think he said "booby." I know, but a few times he said it, he pronounced it like "booby." Oh, like, okay, gotcha. It, I mean, he did, he did. He said it both ways, but I, yeah. I, I, I know distinctly a couple of times he said like "booby." Yeah, and like I don't know if that's just him being weird, you know, or whatever. So, and this reason why is because there's apparently a key inside the bra, like sewed inside or whatever, which is you would think, you know, if you're wearing a bra that you would feel something like inside of it, like pressing against your chest, whatever. That not going to get into like logistics of this, but like, well, I always put a like, key in my bra. I mean, don't we all, right? But, yeah. you know, I guess, you know, depends on the size, though, because we find out later this is a pretty big key. But, um, yeah. <laughs> and it's supposed to unlock something that he didn't, he couldn't really say what. And then he said, you know, to beware of the man in red, because he's apparently, like, you know, like the enemy or, or whatever, you know. Yeah, he's played um, by, uh, that, played by Ty Burrell from uh, Modern Family, among other yeah. things. Yeah. About three years before Modern Family was, yeah. um, Started up so uh, 2006. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Just this show is just hilarious. Like I don't know. Like just something about it because like I I keep laughing at all of the things that he said. Like where like they end up going to Applebee's and he's just like, this is great, isn't it? Eating in the neighbor <laughs> or something like what well, was eating good in the neighbor. <laughs> just like, yes. the way he said it. <laughs> like I'm like wow. And then when they're at, they're at they're at Applebee's, their waitress is played by Retta. Who right. is who is um later on uh, Parks and Rec, and then uh, Good Girls. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very funny actress um and comedian. Oh yeah, she's yeah. great. Yeah. And if you're a fan of Parks and Rec, check out our episode <laughs> with Jim O'Hare. 
Yeah. Who played uh who played uh Gary Larry Jerry. Um <laughs> Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um anyways, um It's funny because today I was actually wearing my mouse rat shirt that I have. So Oh yeah. Yeah. And then I mouse watched rat. this and Retto was in it. I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I just bought a mouse rat shirt the other day. <laughs> That's an interesting name, Mouse Rat. Yes. It's the name, it's of, like saying, the name of the band in the show. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> now, is a mouse... This is kind of going off subject here. Is a mouse the same thing as a rat, but smaller? Are they two different parts of the same... I mean, are they separate species, but they're related to the same thing? You know what I mean? I don't know, but I do know that if you take mouse dewormer, it'll cure the flu. No, wait, what? No. (laughs) Oh, God, we're going to go back to this. (laughs) So, now that you got me on that again for a second, just for a second, (laughs) won't take long. But, like, you know what this literally does? Some people are literally shitting themselves to death. I'm not even joking. Well, I know. They're shitting out the, the linings of their intestines, and it's just like... I mean, that's like horrible way to die i mean not everyone dies from it but just the dehydration the oh god well just well, like, well, well the thing is is i i said on a on a post about the subject i said i said that this i said something about how um people are gonna die listening to his podcast and mm-hmm. somebody took me the what i said literally like what i said they said so they're gonna listen to his podcast and die uh, I'm like, no, they're going to listen to what he says on his podcast and follow his advice, and then they're going to go and be stupid and get horse and cow dewormer and then kill themselves because of it. That's what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I don't know why I had – should I have wrote and written a whole paragraph to explain what I meant? I don't know. <clears throat> what the- These people – I don't know if they're just trolling or if they just lost any – sense of being able to think critically I, I or it could be both i don't know but like and i'm not even certain that this might be a conspiracy theory but i'm not even 100 percent certain that joe rogan really even did take ivermectin or if he's just promoting it because mm-hmm. he know his audience wants to hear that shit because frankly about probably 80 percent of his audience are right wing maybe libertarian people even though he claims that he's like, I don't take sides, man. I just like to learn shit, man. We're all figuring this out together, man. Like the whole Glenn Beck stick of like, we're just learning things together. But yeah, I have a huge platform and you listen to everything I say, but yet we're all equals. Mm, by definition, you're the master, they're the subjects in that kind of relationship. Okay. Um, because if you're, quote, just learning things together... How is it then that you have the authority and then you're pushing that down on other people I, and then they accept it? I find it funny, too, that Joe Rogan now lives in the worst state in the country, too. Yeah, he moved to Texas, yeah. <laughs> which makes sense because he's trying to, you know, solidify that grift that he's he's not a liberal, man. He's not, you know, one of these California Democrats, man. He's in Texas. Texas, don't mess with Texas. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think he's in Austin though, and Austin is supposed to be a really cool place. So I mean, that's the only it's it's like the most yeah. liberal part of the country. I mean, not the state. I mean, not the country, but yeah, the green state. <laughs> yeah, which is true. Which then probably proves that even even regular Texas is even too right wing for him. Which means that he's he's probably not even as right wing as he even per- portrays himself as. But he realizes shit, I can make a lot of money doing this, so I'm just going to keep this role, even if I don't even believe half the shit I say. Is These people are my bread and butter, and if some of them have to die, eh, who cares? You know, I'm I'm a piece of shit, so you know. Mm-hmm. Bye. Anyway. Yeah. Anyway, so um, <laughs> back to uh, the show. Actually, do you want to take a break here, Matt? And we'll come back and we'll talk about the rest of this, and then we'll talk about some... Yeah. Uh, I- I gotta go to the bathroom anyway. I took some ivermectin, so I'm starting to feel the little rumbling in my stomach. So yeah, be careful, man. Okay. Yeah. So 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 we'll be back after the break. Or at least I will be. I don't know about Matt. We'll see. Um, we'll be right back, folks. What is Gen X? 
What is the silent generation? What do generations have in common? Hi, I'm Trish the Dish from the Gen X Voice podcast, and I invite you to listen to conversations I have with folks from different generations, backgrounds, beliefs, and experiences in an attempt to see what connects rather than divides us. Even though Gen X has been called slackers, Karens, or not mentioned at all in some cases, we are the bridge generation, so I feel compelled to do my part to destroy ageism by bringing all these voices together. And as a bonus, each guest gets to answer some 80s questions at the end of each show. So download and listen to Gen X Voice today on Apple, Spotify, Amazon, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And let's see how much we have in common after all. Hi, this is Catherine, host of a new fashion podcast, The Real Fashion School Dropout. Join me as I interview guest every week in the fashion and beauty space and we gossip on all things fashion and beauty and even get into some personal stories of their journey in the industry you can find us on apple spotify pretty much wherever you get your podcast hope to see you there And I am back. Are you okay, Matt? Uh, to tell you the truth, I am not feeling so great. Yeah. Yeah. Have you End started up taking some of that stuff? Have you started having like a craving for like hay? Yeah, a little bit actually. I kind of was going to go outside. I don't have any hay, so I was just taking some clumps of grass and just trying to eat it, but. Okay. Didn't, uh, didn't taste so good. Which is weird because I already took the vaccine, so I'm not even sure why I even started taking the ivermectin. <laughs> I think it's because Jimmy Dore and Joe Rogan told me that it's a really good idea, so I just like, oh, well, you know, I guess I'll just try it. After you took it, did you start to think that Masters of the Universe was too woke? Yeah, I did, actually. It was weird. It's almost like all these ideas are sort of linked to each other. And then when you have one idea, you're more likely to hold another idea. It's, I don't know. It's, it's almost like it's part of the plan. Anyway, um, so so back to uh, <laughs> Lipschitz saves the world. Yes. Sorry for like like in, imposing these political conversations on the people who don't really want to hear hear yeah. me or uh, talk about it. Anyway, um, <laughs> opine basically. It's my fault. I brought it up at the beginning of the episode. So um. I, <laughs> I'm the one that had to run with it. So, <laughs> so um, what else happens here in this episode? So they're at Applebee's. Yeah, they're at the bees. Um, and what happened? Oh, yeah. So, yeah, Leslie Nielsen just kind of appears in, like, the booth where they're, um, they're basically both kind of vying for Adam. Like, they want, they want him on their side. Kind of like a devil versus angel type of thing going yeah. on. Which I guess Leslie Nielsen is playing the part of an angel, I guess. I don't know. And then yeah. um And obviously the man in, the man in red is uh Joe Rogan, right? Oh wait, I'm sorry. Yes, yeah, um yeah, I mean I meant Satan, I'm sorry. <laughs> he's he's gonna look red pretty soon if his skin starts changing color. because uh, he he looked pretty grey and pale, so maybe he'll go into like a pinkish pig man type of look soon. I don't know. Anyway, uh <laughs> Sorry. Uh, they kind of have, like, this whole thing where, like, they're, like, all, like, in competition with each other. Um, <clears throat> you know, like, they both stand up, and they're like, oh, I could stand up all day, and, you know, as can I, good sir, and, you know, and, uh, <laughs> and, and <I'm laughs> sorry, there's just so many good lines in the show. Yeah, I know. I don't go. I, I can count the three, and then Leslie Nielsen goes, very good, Adam. The public school system has served you well. <laughs> I don't know something about I just cracked That was up. funny. Yeah. He's like, no, I mean, I can count the three, and you can sit down at the same time, and he's like, this kid's brilliant, or whatever. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, boy. So, um, yeah, so, so then we have... Um, the they're, they're at the they're at the Applebee's. They they figure out the situation, you know, and he's got to go to this party, and uh, he goes to the party, 
and uh, they're going to have one of those like seven minutes in heaven sort of thing in the closet, you know, that you see in TV shows. And I don't know if ever really happens in real life at parties. <laughs> I, I wouldn't know either. I don't know. Yeah. I've only been to like two parties in my life and I don't mm. remember that ever happening in any of them. So, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, most of the parties I've been to have been, like, family parties, so that have been weird. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would have been... Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Family reunions aren't a good place to do seven minutes in heaven. <laughs> um, <God>. the, <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the... Uh, so, anyways, they, they got the whole thing in... Um, She's like, oh, I'm thinking of a number. Whoever's got the closest number, and uh, so then she picks Adam, and they're in the uh, in the closet. And then he he at one point tries to grope her because he needs to get the bra and and touch her right booby. And um, <laughs> for some reason, uh, I understand having to get the bra because the yeah. key's in it. But why did he have to touch her booby? <laughs> I don't... Unless that's, like, some magical... She's, like, a magical being, and somehow touching that would, like, do some <laughs> something in, like, the mystic universe. I have no idea. Um, yeah. So, um, anyways, he... They, they start talking and everything, and then eventually he... Uh, she realizes that he's a good guy or whatever, but and he explains the situation to her, and... Uh, Supposedly, I guess it ends up happening that he, you know, got the bra and touched the boob, and um, the uh, the um, like you do, and um, so he's there's a key inside of it, <clears throat> and uh, so they got to go off and try to save the world, and uh, there's a helicopter that shows up and. Uh, so, so the person that's in charge of things is she. Mm -hmm. So we don't know who she is. We never find out. Um, oh, no. So he thinks that she's in the in the helicopter, but no, it's Jenny McCarthy. <laughs> uh, he says, says he thought we would like her. And yeah, did, you know, yes. Well, speaking of, of anti-vaccines, there you go. So she well, probably had a thing of well, she, she, that might She's actually... She changed her view on that and everything. Oh, so, okay. Yeah, she, she, right. she's okay now. So <laughs> that was years <laughs> okay. ago. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, because she she fell into the whole anti-vax uh, autism thing. Yeah. Years okay. ago, because her son has autism, and um, yeah. So, which uh, apparently that's so, so terrible, and yeah, you know, autism is a death sentence, and it's yeah. such a huge burden to your family, and you know, that's that's the message you want to send to your autistic children, your family members yeah. is. If only you were normal. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but but anyways, um, coming Sorry. soon is uh, coming soon is season six of The Masked Singer, which she's a judge on, and I love that show. Anyway, so um, <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> the um, anyway, she, she's in there, and uh, plus she was one of my earliest crushes, so I can't. <laughs> <laughs> I can't not like her because of that. So, um, the, um, uh, you know, <laughs> even if she was... Uh, yeah. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Isn't she also Melissa McCarthy's cousin? Yeah. Or at least sisters. Oh, cousin. They're, okay. they're cousins. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. And, uh, yeah, and she's married to Donnie Wahlberg. So, yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> Who was on The Masked Singer last season... Not not oh. as one of the contestants, but as a uh, as somebody there, and she could not guess that it was him. <laughs> oh wow! She guessed her. He, he sang at one part, and she didn't know that it was her own husband, which is hilarious. <laughs> wow! So, yeah. <laughs> um. Anyways, also watch Blue Bloods. It's a good show, even though it's kind of conservative in certain ways. But I like it a lot. It it's a good, good show. It's really it a really good, good show. show yeah. yeah. Fe featuring Greg Gregory Jabara, a former guest on our show. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to advertise all of our former episodes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, the, um, so, so basically she's in the helicopter and then they get in the helicopter and they, and, and, uh, 
he's waiting for her to fly it, but she's like, you're driving. And so somehow he knows how to fly a helicopter. It's like part of his nature, I guess, yeah. you know, and part of the prophecy. And they play Foo Fighters, you know, My Hero is, yeah. is he's there lifting off the... Goes you know, my my hero. Oh, yeah, God, too. The, the Modern Family guy tried to shoot him with a rocket launcher before they got oh, to the yeah. helicopter. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. Right, right out in the, in, like, the front yard, like, basically, like, a bunch of, like, frat dudes, but they're all, like, older guys fighting at, like, a high school party yeah. <laughs> on the front yard. <laughs> yeah, and the waitress played by Retta was yep, at the yep. party, too. <laughs> yeah, as, as you do, yeah. you're like, you know what? On the Friday night, what I'm thinking is I'm going to crash some high school kids party. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get drunk, and I'm just going to challenge another adult who's also at the party for some reason to a fight in the front yard, man. Well, I mean, my youth. all of the parties that I went to in high school, we had the seven minutes in heaven thing. Mm-hmm. Retta and Leslie Nielsen were there. And, <laughs> um... <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. Um, <laughs> That'd be a cool party if it was. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. So. Yeah. But so, so anyways, they, they, uh, they then, um, they go off flying in the, in the helicopter and then we cut over to, uh, the man in red, Ty Burrell's character and, uh, and, uh, Brooklyn Decker's character, who is uh, Rebecca Rebecca Fellini, um, that's the girl that he likes that he got the bra from. Anyways, um, standing there and uh, oh yeah, before it had been mentioned that it was possible that the man in red is Adam's dad. Oh yeah. So um, at, th- at this part. Um, she says, "Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, I did it. I, you know, you know, we just, you know, it's." She says something like, "Yeah, he was one of the nicest guys I've ever fooled around with." And uh, then mm-hmm. uh, he mentions, "Yeah, yeah, he might be your brother." <laughs> yeah. So she's like, oh, okay. she, she's the she's obviously the daughter mm-hmm. of the man in red, and um, yeah. And so that's how that kind of ends, and then we have a. Uh, clip for the next episode that never happened mm. and we see the two of them we, we, we see uh, Rebecca and Adam in bed together and he's saying I can't believe that just happened and everything and I was just like yeah and this is right after we find out they might be brother and sister right so like wait a minute that's fucked up so he told her <laughs> I mean that's okay so like I, sorry I didn't mean to cut you off I'm just like that, I didn't, that didn't make any sense to me it's no like, <laughs> it's fine <laughs> Wait a minute, like, if, I mean, one thing, if they did it before, and he's like, yeah, he might be your brother, and she's like, oh my god, I can't, but then he tells her that before, and she's like, I'm still gonna sleep with them, like, uh, what? Like, I don't get it, but okay. That's um, why I'm telling you, you shouldn't have seven minutes in heaven at family reunions. You shouldn't, you just shouldn't do it. <laughs> bad, bad, news, bad news bears, and, um, <laughs> Oh god! Yeah, and, and maybe something else happened. Maybe they got like yeah. drunk, or or maybe or whatever. We the, don't we don't know. The, the, because... that, the sad fact is, is we'll never find out. And yeah. um, yeah, and then Leslie Nielsen is in the bed with them too. Right, or maybe she found out that they weren't actually siblings. So then they end up having yeah. sex. We don't know, you know. So or maybe they uh, didn't even have you... sex and they're just in a bed together. That could be it too. Because all, all he exactly. says is, "I can't believe that just happened." That could have been anything. It could have been literally anything. They yeah. could have been watching. They could have been watching Joe Rogan's podcast as he talked about getting COVID. And he's like, "I can't believe that happened." Yes. And, um, well, of course, you couldn't believe that happened. It's very obvious. But um, <laughs> so I guess what they really would have saw was Joe Rogan on his podcast saying, "Get the vaccine." They're like, I can't believe that happened. They're like, neither can I. So, um, so. And then Leslie Nielsen was in bed with them. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Like happens, um, like it like it happens. Yes. <laughs> well, and whenever I wake up, Leslie Nielsen is in bed with me. Wait. <laughs> I mean, 
Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, my bed's like only like for one person, so it'd be really kind of scrunched up a little bit. But yeah, mine too. So it's kind of weird because you know. And I usually kind of hang off a little bit already. I, I don't like sleeping mm-hmm. close to the walls. I'd be like frantically falling off the bed, like you know. Yeah. And Leslie likes to hug, hog the covers, so it's kind of it sucks. But, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, did you want to take a look at some? Uh, user reviews for this Matt yes I do okay so uh, there's two user reviews here on uh, the internet movie database base and um, (laughs) (laughs) okay so one of them is from uh, Martin Hafner Hafner I'm sorry on uh, June 8th of 2020 um, he gives it a 10 out of 10 he says wow I think the networks blew it with this one uh, Lipschitz Saves the World is one of the stranger and more interesting television pilots I've seen. It's so good that I wonder how it never made it to be a series. The network's really made a mistake of not approving additional episodes beyond this pilot. Um, okay, he says the, the story is blah, blah, blah. Uh, it says, the story has... A strangeness that I loved as I watched it. It also had originality in spades, but apparently it was too weird for the network execs and they passed on making this series our loss. I think it would have been terrific. Mm -hmm. And like I said, too, I mean, I think this was it's weird that like a year later. And if you liked this, I highly recommend watching Reaper. Because it's got a very similar feel. Um, about a nobody who <clears throat> whose life is more important than he thinks it is, you know. And uh, it's a uh, it's a really good show, and I highly recommend it. And I think you would really like it, Matt. Actually, so um, <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah, I'll try to find it. Yeah, I'll, it I'll I'll look up and see where it's streaming. It's got to be streaming somewhere. Um, but yeah, I, I recommend that show. And Chuck, to a lesser degree, Chuck's kind of interesting in its own way but it's just the whole like you know normal normal guy who finds out that he has like basically superpowers in a way you know what i mean sort of thing or that he's very important to the world um so i think this show was basically like a year ahead of its time you know (laughs) yeah that's what it probably is really is maybe 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 the next season because the thing is this was produced by the, the pilot was produced by NBC that actually the next year picked up Chuck. Right. So, you know, it's just yeah. kind of interesting. <laughs> this could have been... I think this was... Um, this show was a victim of what I, I am now calling just my own phrase. I just made it up right now. A victim of the uh, Dana Carvey show syndrome. I just made that up. Where... A show would like this would probably do better on like Showtime or HBO, not a regular network. Yeah, I mean, if, and I think right yeah. now, it, right now, it would definitely th- th- this show would be on uh, on something like Hulu because I mean it's it's similar to like uh, like uh, um, what was that show? Uh, that show that Seth Rogen produced. Um, uh, I don't know. The, um, the the one with uh, uh the one the one with the, the, the girl from Scrubs and uh and Happy Endings. Um about the video game guy that uh Oh a Future Man he did Future that? Man did f- Yeah Seth oh, Rogen okay. produced that. Yeah, because it's oh, okay. it's ver- this is kind of similar to Future Man. It is, actually. Yeah. I mean not the man in red thing, but like the you know, like a guy who likes video games and he's yeah. just like a regular person or whatever. Yeah. But he's like, I mean, because Destin, yeah, basically, basically, like Future Man and uh, and uh, Reaper are both very similar to this show in concept, not in, not in plot or anything necessarily, but similar in concept. So yeah, you know, the every man is basically somebody who's going to have to save the world in a way, you know. Um, so here, here's another review here. This one's from uh, um, Justin Bogan. Um, 
on March 7th of 2017, and it's uh, he says, hilarious, and this is an 8 out of 10. Just five minutes in, and you wonder why this didn't get picked up for a series. Adam Lichitz is pushed around nerdy kid in high school who thinks he is bound for greater things. However, it's just in his mind until he comes home and finds Leslie Nielsen in his living room. Um, Adam soon finds out Nielsen is there to help him since Adam is on a quest to save the world. Adam's uh, first goal to uh, start saving the world is to get a cute cheerleader to make out with him, feel her right booby, and uh, take her bra, which contains a key, all while avoiding the man in red. It's well done, written well, has great lines and many callbacks to uh, um, past Leslie Nielsen projects. Well worth your time if you can find it. So yeah, it's uh, definitely good. I mean, I enjoyed this. Would you recommend people watch this, Matt? Yeah, uh, definitely. I think this is, uh, you know, I just really, I really loved it a lot. <laughs> uh, most of the pilots we re- not well, yeah, most of the pilots we review are just not that good at all. Um, and I honestly just picked this at random. I wasn't even sure if it was going to be good or not. And um, but yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. And yeah. I don't know. My so, my thing is is uh. You know, somebody uh, get working on reviving this or something, you know, get somebody different than Leslie Nielsen because he's dead. So um, you, yeah. could, you could still get Ty Burrell to be the man in red. Um, but uh, but if not, you know, recast the whole thing, make it again. I think it'd be good. Um, right now, you know, it could be on Hulu or Netflix or something right now. Um, HBO Max or something, you know. Um. Yeah. Anyways, um. So, uh, Matt, have you been watching anything lately that you want to recommend to people? Anything before we go here? <sighs> um. Yeah, actually, I started watching um Titans on HBO Max recently. Uh, and I, I've only watched the first four episodes of the first season, but um, but yeah, I really liked it. I mean, I thought it was just going to be like a regular like CW type of superhero show. I didn't realize that it was like, it had a much darker yeah. kind of twist to it. Like Robin is pretty much like just beats the shit out of people. Yeah. And, um, no, but, uh, but yeah, I, so I, I would recommend that. Um, cool. You know, I, I've been, I haven't done it yet, but I was, I was going to watch some of the, um, there's an animated movie about John Constantine or a show. Yeah. I kind of want to, that out to um, a bunch of cool animated stuff. HBO Max apparently went all in on DC, mm-hmm. whereas E Plus is, has Marvel, I guess it looks like. But yeah, um, so I've been getting into the DC stuff because I have more options now to check some of the stuff out. So yeah, yeah. Speaking of HBO Max, I've been watching. I'm like halfway through it. It's been out for a while, but the Righteous Gemstones. Mm. A Danny McBride show about a televangelist family. Oh wow, it is amazing. Starring John Goodman and other people. Um, Walton Goggins is in it. Um, yeah, it's um, Adam Devine. Um, it's amazing. Highly recommend it. I think you would like it, Matt. Also, um, over on Hulu, um, really good show that just started um, called. Uh, only Murders in the Building, starring hmm. Steve Martin, Martin Short, and Selena Gomez. It's really interesting. It's about uh, it's about these uh, three people that are really into true crime podcasts that uh, all live in the same building in New York, and uh, there's a death in the building, and they're basically decided to make their own podcast to try to solve the murder or possible murder in the building wow. so yeah it's uh it's really good comedic show it's got a lot of good guest stars like nathan lane and uh tina fey and uh um amy ryan and sting and um <laughs> as himself um so yeah <laughs> so yeah it's, it's just a really good show highly recommended um yeah 
give it time to it just it grows on you it's like the first episode's kind of slow but it just it grows on you and plus okay. you know plus martin short and steve martin are just geniuses anyways so <laughs> yeah they are yeah so um yeah check those out um so uh before we go here i mean make sure you check out your uh you know our um our social media we've got um we got a facebook group called all too real Two podcast group we've got a uh we've got a tiktok folks tell us what to do <laughs> i'm still trying to figure out what to do with the tiktok i don't know about the ticks and the talks i'm not really sure what the what the kids are doing these days on there you know i don't know if you want me to go on there and lip sync to a selena gomez song i just make me mentioning her so i figured um but <laughs> i'll do it i'll do it um but if somehow that'll get us more listeners i'll do it um yeah i mean or lip sync to like uh i mean i don't really know any of the new artists but um yeah i'll, 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 like, oh, I'll i do like Go ahead. <laughs> oh, <sorry. Yeah. laughs> we both stop the same yeah. time. See, we're both we're both courteous to each other. Yes. Like, oh, well, <laughs> no, I like this. Uh, was her name was Camilla something? Um, I don't know her last name. She's got a bunch of cool songs. Um, yeah, I, I would love to sing to one of one of her songs. It's called uh, Oh, damn it, I forgot the name of it. But she played it on SNL once. Oh, okay. Really good song. So, um, so, so, if you want Matt to lip sync to a song, um. So, to Camilla something I don't know her last name. Yes, I would ask my niece, but I she's probably like in bed right now. But uh, <laughs> hey, uh, it happens. Who's that Camilla person? Uh, I should probably just be sarcastic. It's whatever the name is because I can't say the name because I don't know what it is. But she does Camilla so Cabello. Sing. That's yeah, yeah. There, there yeah. it is. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I would think to one of her songs. Yeah, I thought that's what her name was. I had to look it up just to make sure I didn't mm-hmm. say the wrong name. Um. Anyway, so um. Yeah, we'll do that. We also have um. We we have a a uh, an Instagram at Cullen Park. Um. We've got uh, Twitter Cullen Park. Um. You know, check those out. You know, we. You know, do that. Um. Go to our. T- Go to our T Public, buy a shirt. I still haven't gotten mine in the mail. They delivered mm. it to the wrong place or something. I don't know. But I, oh, I had to re—I had to reorder it, so they—they they didn't make me pay for it again. So they—they they were good customer service. So um, hopefully, I get it soon. It should be in in the mail, and uh, I'll let you know the quality of the shirt. But it's a good, you know, good deal for some shirts on there, and some other stuff from our show. Um, also. Uh, check out our uh, patreon you know maybe we'll add m- m- maybe we'll add something on there on, on the patreon where you know if you donate so much money um matt will lip sync to any song you choose um or i will any too song. yeah any song yeah yeah. Any, yeah you know you know you, you want you want matt to lip sync to uh justin bieber's baby baby you know he'll do it you know <laughs> i mean yeah yeah <laughs> Of course, now that song would be considered classic rock because it's so old. I know. <laughs> um, y- you want Matt to, uh, you know, lip sync to a whole episode of Joe Rogan's podcast? If you pay us a million dollars, he oh, will do God. that. <laughs> How would I do that? I don't lip-sync. know. That would take, like, a <laughs> skill of such a That's, that's why I'm level. saying if you give us a million dollars, Matt will do that. I would. I, w- I would sit through that and memorize that shit. <laughs> just pour through it, study it like 12 hours a day until I get every single inflection right, every single, the timing of every single, you know, it's possible. Yeah. I mean, that's how people study. Uh, they can memorize the entire Quran. They can literally yeah. just recite the entire book and for start to finish. Um, and for a million dollars, Matt will do that. And well, for you're and, not really supposed to do it for financial reasons, but uh, <laughs> and, and for two million dollars, I will as well. So um, <laughs> so you know, you know, message me at mike at cullenpark dot com. <laughs> 
and we'll figure that out the logistics of yeah. that if you want to give us two million dollars um so uh <laughs> well, we'll have the best damn podcast ever if you give us two million dollars <laughs> Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> Get some really good equipment and uh, mm-hmm. maybe buy a studio. Um, but anyways, the uh, just like Joe Rogan, he's got a real studio, then we can have a real studio. Yeah, and then we could just maybe we'll go, maybe we'll move to Austin. <laughs> oh God, no, <laughs> no, not anywhere in Texas. Uh, I always wanted to live in California, but I think that was like when I was younger, and California just had like this like cool mystique to it but now i'm like i don't want you know to to drown or have the land like just chunk off into the sea so you know i guess i'm stuck in ohio um you know what prevents that though what's that horse dewormer um yes 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 (laughs) i hear back then will actually um cure global warming or climate change yes if only all the people so, in the line of the hurricane that just recently hit were taking it, they'd be fine. Oh, God. Wow. That's uh, terrible. Damn, I'm joking. Just making sure that people don't believe anything I'm saying. So, I but a- a- anyways, um, folks, you know, just share the show. Tell people to, you know, listen to us. Um Sorry for the weirdness about the Joe Rogan thing. I'm just so fucking pissed at him. Anyway, so um <laughs> Anyways, um people wear a mask. Get the vaccine. <laughs> wear a fucking condom. <laughs> and until next time, folks. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks for listening to All Too Real 2 Podcast, a Cullen Park production. Produced and edited by Michael E. Cullen II. Music by Matthew Haas. Subscribe and share the show. Visit us at cullenpark.com.